Welcome, brethren, to another study today. It's entitled Antitypical King David. Here we see a pictorial representation of David uh, playing the harp. Uh, I know he was called to uh, uh, satisfy King Saul's troubled spirit. And uh, this shows the good nature that uh, David had, and he wanted to help a, a fellow brethren uh, with his troubles. And uh, so we're going to look at this study today. Uh, it's a very deep study. Uh, there's a lot to know about this study. And uh, as you will see in the presentation, there's uh, many ideas floated about over the years about this study. So we hope to get to the bottom of it and hope to bring some clarity uh, to the issue. Uh, before we uh, begin, may you please pause the video and claim the promise of John 16, 13, and he shall guide us into all truth. Let's begin. All right, so we're going to look at four common beliefs in this study. Uh, the first belief is that some say that Christ himself will be the antitypical David. Uh, we're going to look at that. Number two, uh, they say David uh, himself will be the raised uh, will be raised from the dead to fulfill the uh, the, the the promise of uh, David ruling in the kingdom, being the the uh, king. And uh, number three, uh, it's an unknown person. Some say uh, due to one uh, of the references, uh, actually a couple of them, but one in particular that seemed to point that it may be somebody unknown that's going to be the uh, the antitypical typical King David. Uh, number four, uh, Victor T. Hoff, and uh, of course he will be uh, raised from the dead as well, just like King David. And uh, some say that he's going to be the antitypical King David. So let's start to look at all the references and then we'll get a good idea of the subject matter. All right, let's look at the first one. Will it be Christ our King? We can go to Ezekiel 34, verse 23 and 24. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. The self-centered shepherds against whom the prophet is told to write are to be replaced by one shepherd, David. When this takes place, God's people will then have but one shepherd. This, of course, cannot be Christ himself, for inspiration never calls him David, but rather it calls him the son of David. Since God's people have always had, and still do have many shepherds, the truth stands out as clear as crystal, that the David of verses 23 and 24 is yet to come, and the shepherds whom inspiration addresses are in particular those whom David is to succeed. Timely Greetings, Volume 2, Number 2, page 1415. So, in our very first reference, we see very powerful evidence that it cannot be Christ himself. Let's go to the next one. Hosea 3, 4 to 5. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return, and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. In this part of the prophecy, you see, we are told that after they have sojourned among the Gentiles for many days, without a king, <clears throat> and without any sign of identification, having been entirely lost sight of as a nation and as a people, they shall finally have antitypical David rule over them. This would not be ancient David, as he was already dead when this prophecy was made. Neither could this promised David be Christ himself, for Christ is the son of David, Matthew twenty-two forty-two, not David himself. And if he shall, moreover, sit on the throne of David, Luke one thirty-two, then David must have a throne for him to sit on. Timely Greetings, Volume 2, Number 43, page 16 and 17. So we see again, once again, powerful evidence that it cannot be Christ himself. All right, our third reference. Now, I, therefore, I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them. 
he shall be their shepherd. Ezekiel 34, 22 to 23. The Lord will work in no less miraculous a manner now to free his people from being ruled by a worldly organization. He will command the work himself in the same manner as he did in Moses and David's day. In the days of Moses and in days of David, when the Lord had the work in his own hands, he spoke to the people through Moses and through David, and thus he ruled. In like manner, he will, at this time, rule the work when he takes the reins in his own hand. Symbolic Code, Volume 4, Number 1012, Page 2. So we hear, we see here a clear idea about how the Lord is to rule. So this makes it again clear that it's not to be the Lord himself who's going to be the antipical David, but he's going to rule through this antitypical David. So it's starting to come into clear focus on our answer for question uh, for the common belief number one. All right, so our answer to belief number one, no, Christ our king will not be the antitypical King David. He sets up one shepherd to rule his final loud cry kingdom in Israel. He is the invisible king who rules through the antitypical King David, as in the days of Moses and David. All right, now, will a uh, ancient King David be the loud cry kingdom king. Here we see a picture of David ruling in his kingdom. And uh, <clears throat> of course, he's got this uh, favorite instrument, the, ar the uh, harp next to him. And uh, But that's the question. Is, is it going to be David himself that's going to rule in the loud cry kingdom? As ancient David is in his grave, the king here promised must be an antitypical David, just as Elijah of Malachi 4 5 must be an antitypical Elijah. Otherwise, in order to fill the prophecies, ancient David must necessarily rise from his grave and ancient Elijah descend from heaven. So let's stop here for a second and concentrate on that uh, reference right there. So here, inspiration is telling us that. Okay, if you want David to be the king in in uh, in fulfilling the prophecy, then there's going to be another Elijah. And so, if we study this message, we know very clearly that the Lord sent Brother Hadaf to be the ancient, uh, pro the prophesized uh, antitype of the ancient Elijah. Correct. So we cannot have this is just bringing us common sense. We cannot have the uh, the situation where David himself becomes the uh, the promised David and, and rules in the kingdom. Having abo abode many days without a king, their lot <clears throat> from the days of their captivity in Babylon, even to this very day, the children of Israel shall afterwards, sometime in the future, says the scriptures, return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Hosea 3 verse 4 and 5. But as David, the king of ancient Israel, has been dead for many years when this prophecy was made, and it has never been fulfilled, he was the type of the David to come. Accordingly, it is those who fear the Lord and his goodness, the Christian Israelites, in the latter days, our time, who shall appoint one head or king, the antitypical David. Track 8, page 13. So our answer to believe number two, no, King David cannot be type and antitype. The message is clear that someone else will be the antitypical King David. The Lord is consistent, just as he promises the antitypical Elijah, Malachi 4, 5, who cannot be the Elijah who was translated, so too the promised David will be someone who fulfills the antitype, antitype not David himself. So it's very clear that the message tells us, no, it's not going to be our Lord and King, and it's not going to be King David. We have to go on to look at uh, answer belief number three. All right, will the antitypical King David be an unknown per person? <clears throat> Here we see a picture of many people and uh, uh, of the 144,000 or, or, or somebody that's unknown that's going to step forward and, and out, end up being that antitypical King David. So is that uh, the truth? Their children will be as, as in days of old, and their community will be established before me. 
I will punish all who oppress them. Their leader will be one of their own. Their governor will arise from among them. I will bring him near, and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares the Lord. So you will be my people, and I will be your God. Jeremiah 30, verse 20 to 22. Now we quote this because this is the verse that reference, Bible reference that those that have that number three common belief use to substantiate their idea of somebody new going to be is going to be the antitypical David. And here is one of the main quotes they use is found in tract 9 page 64 and 65. Five groups in the kingdom. These groups are number 1 the 144,000 Israelites the first fruits of the living whose nobles shall be of themselves and whose governor shall proceed from the midst of them. Jeremiah 30 verse 21. Now, we don't need to read the rest of that, but you can see clearly that the governor, which is the ruler, shall proceed from where? From the midst of them. From whom? From the 144,000. So we see here, brethren, that this is very, very concerning because when we read this, it's it's very uh, uh, clear and, and, and easy to understand that it's saying that the ruler, which we know will be the antitypical King David, comes from among or in the midst of the 144,000. But is there something more that we need to know about? Are we just looking at this one reference and, and, and going to throw away everything else? No, we need to go to the next council. All right, let's look at the inspired council. We would never try to establish an idea on the basis of agreeing with one passage of Scripture while disagreeing with another, for such a conclusion is as sure to be erroneous as if one should conclude that when the sun sets in the evening, it will never arise in the morning. 2 Symbolic Code, number 1, page 5. And our second counsel is, let us remember always to observe the involatile rule that an interpretation of one inspired statement must harmonize with all other related statements. Some were anxious to risk present truth on the weight of one inspired statement seems to say or imply, are thereby presumptuously or very ignorantly overlooking the weight of evidence. Three answer, page 41 and 42. So we're going to use this counsel because that last quote is a very very uh, strong quote in support of a new person okay because we know that brother hadif cannot be one of the 144,000 he will be one with but not one of so we need to stand back and observe that last quote and dwell on it but we're using this counsel we're not going to stand on one statement that seems to say or imply something we're going to look at Number four, the fourth uh, common belief. All right, so answer number three. Answer to belief number three. This understanding is the most interesting, yet it is something we must compare to belief number four. In other words, we're going to have to weigh everything out. We cannot stand upon one or two references and make our stance upon a subject while ignoring all other references. All other references must be carefully studied and weighed, and then we shall know the position to take. So this is very sound doctrine, very sound counsel that we must weigh the evidence. And if we do that, we can stand upon our position with, with knowing the truth of the matter. All right. Will the number four uh, common belief is Victor T. Hada. Will Victor T. Hada be the antitypical King David? Here we see a picture of Brother Hada standing in front of the main headquarters, uh, Building 8 in the Waco uh, Mount Carmel organization. I believe this was back in the 40s, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, he was a very well dressed, uh, proper man. He was very meticulous, and uh, this picture shows that he. Uh, went to great lengths to honor the Lord and uh, be very businesslike in his uh, profession of uh, giving the Elijah message. All right, Hosea 1.1. 1, 1. Then shall the children of Judah 
and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Here we are definitely told that in the latter days, God's saints, without a singer, sinner among them, are to be gathered together from the four corners of the earth and be organized in the, the, the theocratic government of which antitypical David is to the, be the king. 2TG number 21, page 7. So this is extremely, extremely weightful. Note, antitypical Jerez, Jezreel equals who? Antitypical King David. Do we see that here, brethren, in this quote? Yes, we do. Very, very powerful. Jezreel is to be the antitypical King David. So we have a great start here with this reference. Say unto your brethren, Amni, and to your sister, Ruhama, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredom, whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Hosea 2, 1 and 2. From this we see that Jezreel, the one addressed, is symbolical of a prophet who is to command his brethren, Amy, and his sisters, Ruhama, to go to their mother and plead with her to reform. Track 4, page 50 to 51. So here we see that Jezreel is a prophet, and he is the one to start the, the Reformation. So this is another clue. World, uh, White House Recruiter, page 65. Moreover, the context of Hosea's timely vision decisively point out that this great worldwide work of ingathering cannot begin till Jezreel appears on the scene. And who can sanely suppose that Satan will let this crowning 11th hour achievement, achievement of the gospel come to pass without a last ditch encounter with the mightiest forces of darkness? Nor may anyone even for a moment suppose that the Almighty did not foreknow the situation and did not provide the means by which to meet it. One of which is the allegorical name Jezreel, the pen name for his 11th hour agent. Do you see that? The pen name for his 11th hour agent, not the pen name for one of his 11th hour agents, the pen name for his 11th hour agent, singular. Through this simple, expedient, unfamiliar name, heaven disarms the opposition, secures a welcome reception for the recruiter, recruiter, the voice of Jezreel, and thereby enables it to survive the wastebasket and stove, and thus to reach minds confused with falsehood and hearts hardened by prejudice. Again, this is found in White House Recruiter, page 65. So here we see a very powerful clue that uh, the Jezreel is the one that compiled the White House Recruiter. Very, very uh, striking, powerful evidence. We're zeroing in on this Jezreel, who we already know will be the antitypical David. Thanks to this means of victory over Satan's conspiracy, not only the elect, but even the whole earth as well, shall hear Jezreel. And great, therefore, shall be the day of Jezreel. Hosea 2, 22, verse 1. Uh, chapter 1, verse 11. A detailed exposition of Hosea's entire prophecy can be secured upon request. White House Recruiter, page 65. Again, very clear that this leader, this end-time leader, uh, the earth shall hear. And who is that? Antitypical Jezreel. Now, who is antitypical Jezreel. Well, the message itself, brethren, tells us who it is. Also, if you know of any other, if you know of other open-minded, free-thinking, truth-seeking brethren, I shall appreciate your mentioning how many. And if they shall wish, you may send in their names and addresses either for our mailing list or for a private interview or for both. You, have, you may address me. Who is the me? Victor T. Hodoff. How does he sign off? V.H. Jezreel. Powerful. Mount Carmel Center, Waco, Texas. You can find that sign off 
as him declaring that he is Jezreel on all the Jezreel letters. And uh, we have the other evidence that we just showed you, the White House recruiter, where he said the voice of Jezreel was, was speaking in this White House recruiter. And he signed it on page three, a post for every ministerial graduate by V.H. Jezreel. So here we see very, very clear evidence that the Jezreel in the message is Brother V.T. Hadaf. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. The self setted shepherds against whom the prophet is told to write are to be replaced by one shepherd, David. When this takes place, God's people will ha then have but one shepherd. This, of course, cannot be Christ, for inspiration never calls him David, but rather it calls him son of David. Since God's people have always had and still have many shepherds, the truth stands out as clear as crystal that the David of verse 23 and 24 is yet to come, and the shepherds whom this inspiration addresses are in particular those who David is to succeed. Now, we repeated this quote already. We did it before, but it's very important, brother, that this David, typical David, is one shepherd. It's not going to be the 144,000 in a group. One uh, brethren sometimes have said that that, oh, it's going to be the 144,000. They are all the antitypical of David. No, it says one shepherd. And as we saw, the answer is very clear now after our study. Ezekiel then was not given a vision of the shepherds in his day, nor in those before his day, but the shepherds after his day, in the day which God raises up this antitypical of David to feed his hungry and neglected flock. God's people shall then no longer serve strangers, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Jeremiah 39. <clears throat> Here we see that not only Jezreel, I mean Ezekiel, but uh, Jeremiah also was given a vision of this same truth. Yes, all the prophets. 2TG, number 2, page 14 and 15. God's servants are raised up. The battle cry is sounding along the line. Let every soldier of the cross push to the front, not in self-sufficiency, but in meekness and lowliness, and with firm faith in God. Your work, my work, will not cease with this life. For a little while we may rest in the grave, but when the call comes, we shall, in the kingdom of God, take up our work once more. Seven Testimonies, page 17. So we see that not only Brother Hadif is going to be raised up in the kingdom, but Sister White and all the pioneers that were faithful from the SDA church will be raised up to take up their work once more. Praise the Lord. So this is now becoming very clear, very weightful in our subject. Jeremiah 39, let's repeat that one again. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So we see, brethren, that it's going to be somebody who's going to be raised up and going to be the David antitype king. We already went over it that the message tells us it's not David. And uh, we know it's not the Lord. It's not going to be another new person. Because we've already established that Jezreel, and who is Jezreel? Brother V.T. Hadaf, is going to be the antitypical King David. Answer to belief number four, antitypical David, Victor T. Hadoff. Here you see a picture of Brother Hadoff. He was in his home, we believe. Uh, they, uh, they, they took a nice picture of him. He's a very, very uh, down-to-business person, very humble. Uh, but this is what the message tells us, and this is what we have to stand upon. 
All right, that concludes our study. Uh, any contacts that you would like to let us know, uh, any thoughts, uh, requests, you can reach us at pre-11thhour at gmail.com. There's our uh, ministry address. And, of course, you can text us if you'd like. Uh, there's our phone number. And uh, we're glad to give you more Present Truth uh, studies. Uh, we hope you've been blessed. Um, the message clearly tells us that antitypical David will be Victor T. Hoddaf. And the other uh, common beliefs fall by the wayside. They don't have enough weight of evidence to support them. And we're counseled time and again through spare prophecy, through the rod message, even the Bible says study to show yourself is approved. Well, you can only study by going through the weight of evidence, supporting the weight of evidence. And that's what we've done in this study, brethren. So we hope we've been helpful. And until next time, may the Lord continue to guide you into all truth. Amen.